Hey everybody, and welcome to a wild ride that'll pull on your heartstrings because we get personal, we get vulnerable, and we pour jackass all over it. Yeah, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, Danger Aaron. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Scott. Welcome. Yep, oh, I don't have to introduce you to Scott. Yeah. Have you met my gorgeous other co-host, Paul yeah. Brisky? Yes, we met uh, several years ago, I believe. Yeah. Was it? Oh, it yeah. might have been. And then you met yeah. on I FaceTime, think that was too? You. Once COVID hit, dude, time has been warped so bad, like I swear to God. Yeah, we, I don't met, we met over a... Uh, a computer Zoom call to talk about his tooth. That's right. When we did the tooth video. Yeah, the tooth oh, video. Oh, that's right. Okay. And that was, I think, the only time that, dude, we that was talked. not long ago. How long ago? Did you say two years ago? That was like that, a week ago or so. That, I mean, a dude, week? That, no, that, that, that was a few months. The maybe. tooth video is like maybe four months. And then the, the first time I met you was when you guys did the uh, the waxing mustache. Oh yeah. I thought we met before that. I don't think so. That was because I was maybe when we went not. to Portland. <laughs> okay, so that was. That was like 14 years ago. 2014. Dude, the waxing. Oh, 2014. <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> it's it, yeah. What'd you say? It's not a. The waxing not mustache. A chaplain. It, it was uh, that was a fucking classic bit, dude. That was like yeah. early on the YouTube deal. Yeah, yeah that, you guys came up. That's when you were growing out your stash to do different looks for acting. No, I don't think it had anything to do with acting. I, I for all I know, I was growing it out to wax it. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds about right. So long ago, I don't remember. You had a must. You had a, a beard. A beard, maybe. But let's uh, make this shit kick ass like right out of the gate. Um, have you announced to the world what what you have to announce? Oh, I have lots to announce. But you're a probably baby? what you're referring to. What? What'd you say? You're having a baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't say shit. <laughs> oh, I was just yeah. kidding. Are you, is yes. that it? No. He totally no. is. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a me. Oh. oh, you didn't even know because he didn't uh, tell I, you. I didn't know. No. I, I, I didn't tell him. I knew. But well, I, I like announced to the world, and I was joking. Like, are you pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I no, I thought you knew, and then you were just saying that, and then you felt bad because you only, said it. Because a lot of times, if somebody told somebody and they weren't supposed to tell that person that they got told, that's the big one. It's like, oh, right. I wasn't. I'm sorry. Right. I, like no, I, I didn't full, full, full disclosure. Know. Full disclosure. I, I, yeah. I said it, <laughs> and I was joking, and I and I forgot. But we spoke on the phone a couple of days ago, and you told me when we were when we were talking about the merch operation. Yes. Yes. But and then, right when it came out of my, my mouth, I was like, oh fuck up. I don't even think I'm supposed to tell anybody. <laughs> exactly. But I was just trying to be funny and say, like, oh, you're pregnant? Like, you know, I'm no, sorry, yeah. dude. Well, no, very no, funny. You I'm stole have, I'm Aaron's a child. moment. <laughs> yeah, way to blow it for me, dude. I'm so like, sorry, dude. There's like so many cameras in here. It's not just audio. Take, um, taking my glory, bro. Dude. No, uh, I'm kidding. But. It, it's, it's the first trimester. <laughs> Is you only tell people who are like super, who are like you're, you're, you'll be comfortable saying that you had a miscarriage. Yeah, but That's how many times have you been tell. pregnant? Never. Okay, so I can tell you from my experience, it's I've never been had had a child before or, or anything. Uh, I've I've raised a child. I love my stepchild Lucia, but I've never actually gone through the process of of, of birth like this and. It's it's a it's it's cr on itself. It's amazing and, and wild and crazy. But during COVID, it's like I don't <laughs> how would I don't even know what to compare it to. But for people well, that have talked to me about like having a child during COVID, they've all been like, it's just crazy. I can't go to the, any of the meetings, or you know, I can't go with this and that. And I don't know who to tell because I'm normally you have like a baby shower or you have some event where you can. Get everyone together. So then the event becomes a Zoom call or some Instagram post. How far or along? Steve well, yeah, that's podcast, what I was gonna yeah. say. Yeah. Not only not only did nobody know like during the first trimester, he, his child is expected to be born on May twenty first. Yes, like and, like, and if you think about literally it, literally like a couple months. months soon. Like yeah. yeah. They're way down the track. But I was filming Jackass you, Four and at the time I was doing something or very you know, let's just say dangerous to a certain part of my body multiple times over and over again. And, you know, he thought, he thought that maybe that he <laughs> thought that he thought that if uh, everybody knew that he was expecting a child, that they would be like, oh, well, he's well, the, already reproduced. Like, you know, we can like go extra super hard on him. Yeah. But the, when, come like, to find dude, out, I couldn't go any harder than we already did. Like. So yeah, I, I, of course we can't we can't say anything, but like let's just say that they're gonna have to not 
show like what actually happened in a lot of cases because to show what happened would just be too much they too gnarly. They, really? too so, just way I went, too i was gnarly. so crazy <laughs> on this new movie yeah like are you but i but i broke my neck so many times i told jeff and and knox i'm like listen i can't break my neck again so I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do. <laughs> well, we figured it out. So they broke so, the opposite part of your body. No, it, it's functioning, yeah, bro. That, that, that's <laughs> that, that's enough enough said yeah. um, uh, uh, about all that. But yeah, dude. So Danger's gonna be a dad. And and uh, congrats, congrats. Thank you. Now, Boy or girl? Girl. Oh, I want to say too. Would you would you think about about my COVID joke? When, uh, oh, oh! I, last I night about, I went to your show and the 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 one about not having children. Well, ever. it was just it was just <laughs> uh, it was about the pandemic. I said how like man, thousands of people dying every day. It's like oh sound, yeah, it, it sounds serious, but I don't have any context. So I, I just I, I was too curious. I had to find out how many people die anyway. It turns out before the pandemic, uh, the average deaths in America every day was seven thousand five hundred. But that's yeah. not what's shocking. What's shocking is how many average births. There's 11,000 Americans born every day. Is that day just Americans or world? That's just in America. It, in America. Just in America. So, so I'm like, okay, wow. so once I've given that statistic, 11,000 are born every day. 11,001! Which, <laughs> which, which, yeah. So we're net so, 4,000 a day. So yeah. Net 3,500, yeah. Okay. So then the punchline is, which begs the question, should the coronavirus not pick up the pace? <laughs> we might be in trouble. <laughs> right? I mean, it's getting kind of crowded around here. <laughs> you know? I mean, it is. Planet I'm looking Earth. at traffic right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not just lot. here and around here. It's everywhere. And it, the it, population of the Earth is... Sure. It's uh, too many. It's, 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 it's a little double bit what a... it should be, and it's going to continue to rise. And we're, yeah. we're like we're like ants in a molehill, or uh, ants in an ant farm, an ant hill, and all that. It's just like, they're everywhere. Yeah. Food right. and we're not water as strong is going to be like... Uh, ants are really strong. And smart. Geniuses... Except for when they take the bait every time. That's like, <laughs> come on, dude. Your um, little bro just brought back all that stuff I'm going to kill you all with. So, and so, he killed you last time. What are you doing? <laughs> so when we've done stand-up like, uh, together, mm. there, was, there was a period where like, uh, we, were, we were doing all, like, uh, oh. you know, everybody from Jackass except for like, like Bam and Knoxville and, and yeah. we man, like all of us were doing shows together. And whenever I go up to uh, Portland, Oregon, yeah, uh, or Seattle, <clears throat> like uh, we'll do shows together. And and you talk a lot about how you grew up in a funeral home, mm -hmm. and uh, like you've got the joke about about what, what was it that you would like crawl into the coffins and pretend to be dead? <clears throat> oh man, so. I, I mean, I was a kid, you know, I was seven years old, but I grew up in a mortuary since the age of three, so. What's the difference between a mortuary and a funeral home? Same. Okay. It's a funeral Same home and mortuary. <coughs> um, and your dad is a, a funeral director? Yes, a mortician. Mortician, that's what my cousin is. Yeah, so he does makeup, the services, everything. Um, grieving with the family and... It's gnarly, man. It's crazy. But so I don't know, like one day I was in the casket room where he sells caskets and the family who was crying and I, I got in there into the casket room right before they did. And I closed down this casket and I laid in it. And as the my dad lifted the casket to show them the inside of it to sell it to them for the one, you know, they just lost their loved one. I jumped out of it and went, ah, and crazy. And I got out and he looked at me and just said, Get upstairs. And you know when your dad talks really quietly <laughs> back in the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that meant you were exactly. getting your ass by whooped it. by his belt that had his initials on it or his whole letter or his whole name on it. Because back then, everyone, I don't know, it was cool to make your own leather belt and stamp your name into it. Hmm. So he mm -hmm. whooped my ass with Young this Young cunt doesn't belt. know shit about that. No. The 80s. <laughs> no. I was alive for like three months of the 80s. I, I don't Nobody understand this new like way of life. Like just posting everything you do and not doing anything for real. I don't know. It's Well, how do you how do you keep busy during the day? And, and, and oh wait, I, sorry, were you going somewhere? Well, I was just curious, like is the funeral home still like what your dad does? Like or No, he's retired now. Um So there's so, not gonna be any so your kid is not gonna grow up in a funeral home. No. 
that won't happen. Right, why, you make it sound like it wasn't a real treat to grow up. It was a real treat. It was a real treat. Man, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking creep. <laughs> yeah, what does that do no, to you, somebody? I, 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 well, basically, <laughs> like, so at a very young age, I realized I had this epiphany. So I came in, I remember, the lady I What kind of to. an epiphany did you have? <laughs> As a young buck at the age of, you know. Actually, it was I was about nine, I believe. <laughs> And Epiphany Amber Thiessen. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, mother effer. <laughs> that was so good. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. No, but she she stopped me, and I just had come home with books in my hand eh, from elementary school, and she stopped me and thought I was part of the family. And she's telling me about her, the, the husband that she had lost. She was an older lady, elderly. And she was telling me all these stories and everything. And, and then I basically just kind of walked off, went upstairs to my room. But it made me realize that the stories and the memories that you share and the people you connect with in this planet that we call Earth is that is what life is. And if you can let go of life and be positive and not look back and say, I burned people, or I did bad stuff and whatever, then you can just let let go. And that's heaven. And leaving behind memories of stories with, with family and loved ones and being a good person, so, it, meant, it meant a lot to me. And so I, I wanted to basically... Con- do that for forever, but it made me realize that I wanted to do something to the masses, like entertain, be an entertainer or something, an athlete, like mm-hmm. do something where I could like make a big splash, not just for my little town. That's just me personally. And then that's kind of how I ever became Danger Aaron, you know, snowboarding, right. pro snowboarder, trying to just... So, so you got <clears throat> your way into Jackass was very much the same as Dave England's. You guys were like, a, like a package deal. Um, well, I was snowboarding up in Oregon. Dave had moved up there. I, I'm from Oregon, um, and uh, Dave, our friend, so Dave England got in, and he was like, "Yo, my, my no, it was wife. actually Whitey, my friend Whitey." Oh um, yeah, Whitey. Okay, told those guys because we were filming stuff up there, just funny whatever gags, snowboarding stuff, and. I had written a couple ideas, and so they flew up there to film the the pilot uh, with Dave and myself. Uh-huh. And because that's when the you idea did the... that I had turned in, they were just like, "Oh, what? That's crazy." Okay, let's do it. But and what was that the idea? Ideas were like urban kayaking. Oh, there was so many urban kayaking, blind driver, um, all the danger, Aaron, like extreme scooting, like that whole character, mm-hmm. you know, danger, Aaron. What was the gnarliest? The pogo slam? stick. This this shirt. Oh, dude, I, actually, I love that, dude. I this, love when he pogo sticks onto the skateboard. It's one of my this, favorite. Mm-hmm. This is actually a shirt I had made um, by Mikey Boss Dog, uh, and he he did this graphic for me. I said, "I all I want is a pogo stick. I want my orange jumpsuit and my pogo stick from the first skit I ever filmed." And That's that, was, what, that was the first skit you ever that was, filmed. Uh, I showed up. To, to God, that was such a genius idea. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm like so jealous of that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah so simple. So, so simple. Yeah, so yeah. good. But doable, too. I know it's doable. I couldn't quite figure it out. But I, you, how, many, how many tries did you take? Uh, on the, 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 that, you mean just the, the pogo well, skate? Because I, I would imagine board? that you would have trouble committing to that. No, no trouble committing. I full committed back in the day, and I still do. You know, you've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this was you—you you did a pogo stick right onto a skateboard. Well, yeah, I was trying yeah. to basically become the first pogo skater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's why I made this shirt, and and so it's pretty. That's bad. great, man. I became so, the first <laughs> stilt skateboarder. There you go. And uh, wow, did that fuck me up. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw that even. I, I, did, I did it on stage at spring break. I don't even know if there was fucking footage rolling. And I landed just straight on my ribs. And oh. like, I, I didn't even break a rib. I just like bruised them, I think. Ooh, and that's I even worse. Couldn't sometimes. laugh. Dude, mm. laughing hurt so bad. Like, and yeah. sneezing. Oh my God. Yeah. The worst. And when was the first time so, that you guys met? So, well, so back to this pogo thing. Um, I showed up on for the pilot. This was like way before we even had a TV show. So it wasn't even called Jackass at that point. No, no, right. it wasn't. It wasn't called Jackass. It was just a a show that we were trying to sell to either MTV or Comedy Central. It hadn't been bought yet, so we were just doing a, you know, you had your was stuff. It, was it was it on that trip when Dave England had the the fake baby on the bicycle and crashed the bicycle? Um, that was the f- following. Trip, I think they came up. Where f- they actually came up for 
about a week to film. That first pilot we did was two week, uh, two two days. It was a weekend shoot. Right. We came up, and I showed up dressed as Danger Aaron for no reason whatsoever. I just showed up in that. Danger Aaron outfit with because a helmet. Because you care about leaving people a legacy of entertainment. <laughs> yes. And I figured, what better way to, to just, just hug myself off of things? Was and, that, uh, sorry, was that like the character, you know, Danger Aaron, was it invented for that or it was already no, a no, thing No, no, it doing? actually came from um, uh, two years prior, I dressed up as a race car driver and we bought an LTD and we met. <laughs> We, we went backwards all through Portland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and then the next year, I didn't have an outfit for Halloween. So I went as Danger Aaron, which was the race car driver outfit. And all of my injuries were, which at the time, at the age of 20, I believe, it was a neck brace, an arm brace, a leg brace, a leg so brace. all your medical paraphernalia yeah, you and, had collected. And, yeah, and a crutch. And, and, and then I went for Halloween as Danger Aaron. And then... Later that, you know, next year or whatever, when they showed up, I still had that costume. And so I showed up with my helmet and my mechanic suit that, you know, mm -hmm. has my name or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and then it's Dave was pogo sticking <laughs> and I just got out of the car and I was like, hey, can I try? And I, and then I just went through all through Portland pogo sticking. <laughs> Bad. It's a cute story, but the, the reality is the the name Aaron McGee sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real truth. Yeah. yeah, but Stephen Glover's much better. <laughs> That's why I don't use it. <laughs> Steve, Stephen Gilchrist Glover? No, that doesn't sound right. You're the first Gilchrist I've ever heard. Yeah, you know what Knoxville's real name is? Yeah, we do. Yeah, you allowed to say it on... Philip I mean... John Clapp. What's it? What's Shoopy? He's named after an STD. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, is Clapp spelled C L A P P? It is. Why? Well, I, mean, I don't know how the STD. No, I know like his that. name is spelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 STD one. I don't think it's spelled the same. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't fucking how much, care. How much? How much hardware do you have in your body? By hardware, Scott means plates and screws that one gets surgically drilled into their bones when they've been broken beyond what the body can repair naturally. So, I love my hardware. And I love the hardware that I wear outside my body on my right wrist because it makes life like a video game. See, it's called a whoop band and it is the most epic fitness tracking device out there. It gives me so much insight into my activities, how many calories I burn, how much rest I'm getting, what kinds of rest that like, it just motivates me to stay more active, to get better score on my rest, to just be a healthier person man it makes my life better and i want you to try it get yourself a whoop band the whoop band is completely free and what you do is you go on whoop.com that's w-h-o-o-p Dot com to sign up for your membership. And when you do that, if you use the promo code Steve, you get 15% off at checkout. So do that. Head to whoop.com, use the promo code Steve, get 15% off at checkout, and let your life be a really fun video game that makes you healthier. Now, let's talk about dangerous hardware. Um, I have had three broken necks, so um, I've got uh, fusion at C5 and 6, a disc replaced at 6 and 7, a disc replaced at 7, T1, and then my neck fused itself at C2 and 3 because of scarring from, like, injuries. Um, and how many of those yeah. injuries you just listed are from Jackass? Uh, I broke my neck twice in the last film we did, previous to what we are just working on now. And so what's, what bits? Uh, I think it was number three. There, there was, uh, yeah. and up in the snow. Shopping cart. He was sitting yeah. there and they were going to have him ski across like a, some little body of water. <laughs> yeah. No, but so I got in a shopping cart and I was in the and fat And it was suit. built on water skis or something? It was on, no, it was on regular skis and, and Eric Rohner, rest, rest oh, right, piece, right, right. pushed me through, uh, down the hill and they built this pond that I was supposed to land in and the gag was that I'd get wet. And then I'd walk over to get a towel and they would just a hole, like an eight foot hole drop drops off and then I eat shit in there and then I think some you snakes or some shit. <laughs> well, no. And I told Jeff, I was like, yo, I'm pretty good with knowing how like velocity and how, like stuff. I'm, I made a career off of this. And my whole life has been about hucking my body and surviving. And I said, I'm going to hit that wall. I'm going to flip, hit that wall and break my neck. And he's like, no, you'll be fine. And sure enough, I did. And it whipped and I knocked out and I get in the water and... I'm, 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 uh, 
fully concussed and I come to because it's ice cold water and I get up and I'm like, oh my God. And everyone's looking at me literally like they thought they killed me in full speed and regular speed. It was fucking violent as shit. Like, yeah. And, and I'm standing there like looking at them like, like, should I be walking right now? Like, should, what should I do? Because I feel like I'm I'm dying. I, and, <laughs> and, and they all looked at me like, oh God, what that went wrong. What do we do now? And then somebody said, the towels are over there. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And I'm like, okay. Ah. Did you, did and I walked through? over and I fucking went in the hole. And they let me drop in the whole eight foot hole, even knowing that I had already probably, like, I was a fucking ghost. I was just a walking, they, they thought they oh, no. killed me. They didn't oh, understand. God. And, and I fell in the hole and I'm laying in there go, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> just like that. Sorry, that oh, might be too loud. No, and and they, they, yeah, they, they, they let it happen. Dang, and that didn't air on anything. That, was, that wasn't part of it. No, that. because they felt so bad. I mean, that's another example where they couldn't show it actually happened yeah. because it was too much. It was too much. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> like, if we had just, like, not the point fives, because even the point fives can't show, the, like, a lot of the gnarly stuff. If we had... Uh, I mean, I don't know that there's that much footage that was, like, couldn't be shown. I mean, it sounds like like uh, you're falling <laughs> with a broken neck into an eight foot pit. <laughs> like, it does count? Why? But like, there's lots of things, man. <laughs> We've been doing this for 21 years. Like, why? What, do you, what comes to mind? Yeah. Well, okay. Take for instance, I did something that you would have seen that you might not know the backstory of what you really could have seen. Um, yellow snow cone. Okay. Where I, I I pee into a snow cone. I, I saw that and I was like, man, that's low brow even for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but not at the beginning. And it was it was awesome. Like you can say what you want, people remember it. Sure. Sure. True, absolutely. Ta okay, they do. Yeah. yeah. So so my original idea with that was that I wanted to make a Snoopy snow cone machine, <laughs> like pee cone, and we couldn't get like Hasbro or whoever owns that brand to. To clear off that, so so I was like, okay, well, what about this? And we just stuffed, you know, Dave, it was snowing in Portland in Dave's backyard, and that's when we filmed that. And I peed in a snow cone, and I ate it, and it was pretty gnarly, but it wasn't like super gnarly, like compared to what, yeah, we do now. But back then, it was like, you don't show that stuff for real on a movie on, on MTV, you know? or was it on? That was, that the, was movie, the movie. Yeah. It was in the first movie. Like you just don't show real stuff like that on a film in a theater. Theaters. At the time. And so I did that. Dave kicked me in the nuts. That felt really not cool. <laughs> Whatever. And I dropped to my knees and I started puking because it was disgusting. And he hit me, kicked me so hard in the dick that my stomach basically like was exploding <laughs> with all the food that I had just eaten. And so I puked all over the place. And then I stuff, I pick up that snow and I stuff it into the snow cone thing. And I look at the camera, Dimitri, I think, and I go, and now this is the brown snow cone. And then I ate my puke in the snow and they never showed that. They can't okay. show that. Why? It's not because it's disgusting. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you like can't the, the show vomlet. that. Like well, we did that, but there did was. Did they ever show the vomit when uh, Dave? They hit, we had to reshoot that three times just to get it because of all the. And, and that was why and they had hazmat suits and shit. I'm not really? sure. I talked to Jeff the other yeah. day about mm. that, and I, can't I, I don't remember. know. Like I can't even remember. How about on the first movie when you did the mouse trap thing, and you were like crawling around in the with all the mouse traps everywhere? Yeah. And that was like, it was like, all right, that's kind of cute. But then what was like the most amazing thing that anybody had ever seen was when was it Knoxville threw the mouse trap and it snapped onto my your, balls. Yeah, like how fucking incredible was that? Can you imagine trying to do that on purpose? <laughs> yeah, no, never it'll happen never again. happen again. Yeah. That, yeah. that, the that, thing that, about that, doing the mouse probably... traps that was so gnarly or whatever impressive to me was that <laughs> when you set 2,000 mouse traps, if one goes off, yeah. a lot of them go off. And then you've got the, uh, that whole problem. And we like were able to set 2,000 mouse traps for me to roll through. So that was pretty cool. What would you say <laughs> if they were like, okay, we're going to redo that old mouse trap bit, but it's going to be rat traps? With rat traps, yeah. I, I, I'm. Uh, Why? What's the difference? Bigger and harder? Yeah, rat, rat traps, traps are, break are your fucking, fingers, dude. Yeah, they're heavy, dude. Rat, rat traps. If a rat trap gets clamped around your balls, you, you're not having balls, dude. So they'll just over. they'll just squish them completely. So, so when you put your tongue on a trap, it's a mouse trap. Yeah, you don't do a rat trap. Oh, right? I mean, you could. Yeah, rat traps are fucked point? up. What's the point? 
right? I don't yeah, know. Maybe a little too much. I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe. Might be too much. So let, let me let me ask you about this because this is something that I feel like pretty strongly about. Like <clears throat> over the years, like all twenty one of them, like you've kind of like been. Uh, like sort of a whipping boy, you know? It's yeah. like it's like everyone just be mean to Danger Aaron. Like where what makes Jackass so special is this like camaraderie, this charisma or not charisma, this chemistry that we have between us. Yet like it's just like bullying. You've been yeah. like, you've been the victim Very of, much of so. bullying. For sure. For like, you know, a lot of the time, yeah. dude. And and, and, I, and it's hard for me sometimes because well, a lot of times for any purpose of somebody being a bullied but i'm you know in a sense being uh outcasted and bullied in a, and, and it's all in good fun as so everyone says but the reality is is no matter what eventually you just get tired of the same repetitive jokes that are being put towards you right and that's it's different because it's my job i'm not like this in person like if you fuck with me like i'm sorry you like i'm not gonna just take it like i do with while we're filming stuff because right. it's we need that person like as a group right. we really do like if we didn't I, have I mean, me i guess to so, get but, the, but yeah but at but, this but point I've to never, me it's, i've never done that to you man I've no always you've always been, been pure I've, yeah i've rad, always so. always been a bro what happens in this situation a lot of times is like one person will say something and in order for them not to get picked on they make sure that they're dishing out and then all of a sudden, everyone else will just kind of follow suit right behind. It's a normal thing in life. People do it. Sure. Like, Same way kids do it. In order for it. them not to feel like, uh-oh, they're coming after me. Let's go after that person. And then my the attention will not be on me mm -hmm. anymore. Or, 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 You know what I'm saying? And Yeah, it's almost like maybe maybe they're getting bullied at home, but they're not kids. <laughs> I don't I, know what the honestly, answer is. Honestly, all I know uh, is who I am, you know, as... as... You getting hot? Yeah, you getting a little hot. Hmm. Can we oh, open up that, that that window? Yeah, turn on that fan. Sorry, dude. You can max air that stuff and the little blaster yeah, fan. Mm -hmm. This thing's set up for all terrain. Do you? Yeah, does it ever come also like all terrain interviews? Because people ATI. who people who watch Jackass, they feel so close to you guys. They feel like they're your buddies. So do people come up to you and feel like they can bully you because no, they've seen no, you bullied? No, no. I think most people come up to me and they can relate to what happened to oh, that's me cool. because mm. because no matter like. <clears throat> Yeah, there's like, you know, there's the cool guy and the cool guy, like everyone thinks that's cool. That cool guy's getting picked on all the time too. Like even if it's just people don't respect that person or something like we we're all human beings. Like we yeah, have dude. like we need to take care of each other. What does there, Morrissey say? Like uh, I'm just a human and and I I, I need to be loved. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, I can't remember what we were just talking about though. You you said that um I said, I said everybody so, bullies you, yeah. and, and I mean, a lot of the time it's funny. I mean, like yeah, a, I mean, a lot of it's funny, and I do agree with you that maybe, like, to an extent, we need that. But I said when I brought this up initially, I feel strongly about it because I think that, you know, for a lot of the time, it's just gone too far. It's, totally. it's, it's gone past the point of being, totally. like, playful and fun, and it's like... It's, what's the it's, point? It's, it gets to the point at what it's like, what's the point? of saying mean things to a person when uh there's not even cameras being rolled and a lot of times like not a lot of times but sometimes and it's not yeah. just to me it's to everybody like we latch on to somebody else to take the blame off of us and that's what mm -hmm. happens with this we get nine guys ten guys together whatever now it's like a more I mean, but everybody gets shit there's no question about that but it just goes with you it's just it's been too much a lot of the time and it's been when cameras aren't rolling and it's like yeah and and i've just you know i i i'm, I'm speaking up for you man because i i love you and you're a great guy hey you don't deserve that fucking shit. thank you yeah thank you well uh, here's what here's what you just said is I, i'm a great guy i mean i don't know if i'm a great guy but i'm a good person i'm a good yeah, yeah, good guy yeah. and I, I and at the end of the guy. day and at the end of the day whatever people say or do to me like i go home i'm like dude i'm killing it in life like i'm killing it in life i've got the best life <clears throat> i'm the same person i was before i started jackass it, it, like i'm i'm i feel like you can't say shit to me like literally Man. you can't say shit to me that's gonna like make me not really know who i am and, and cool. respect myself I, so I, I agree with I, that I, like, I have to be 
really strong to be able to still continue to hear that shit over and over again because I'm not letting it. It, it, it does affect me. I, and eventually, <coughs> I get over it, and I'm just like, fine, then you guys can talk shit to yourselves. And I'm going to walk over here go back and to get one back of your to my houses. life. Go back to one of my nine houses and yeah. chill, dog. <laughs> I mean, but that, that's you have to be thing. strong. And like your shirt says, you do right. in, in life, especially when people are like, giving you shit for no reason. All you want to do is crawl up into a ball and be like, yeah. fuck, they're right, I suck, but you don't. You know, I don't right. suck, no, I don't, don't care. Well, just look at the people just that are bullying you, you, you know? It's like, even like the comments on some of the videos, it's like, dude, who, who's actually saying that and why would you say that to anybody? Do comments on social media, it's like the way that the world works right now with social media and how easy it is to just ridicule people and make them feel like shit for no reason. It's ridiculous. That's turned into normal society now. And that's not how we need to live. Like, what's the point in telling everybody what they're doing wrong instead of like saying, hey, you're doing this right and you could fix this or do that better, but you're not always just doing wrong. Like, like well, that's not gonna benefit us all. It's a spiritual axiom, meaning like an immutable law of nature that the way we treat others is a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. And that's why it's all the hating and negativity. You know, it's like you got some fucking shit going on with yourself and you don't like it. And so you take it out on other people. Like in general, like happy, healthy people don't shit on others. Yeah. You know, well, you, but, you, but we, it's different with this because we, this is, this is, I mean, honestly, I am, I'm 100% sure that we all love each other like <coughs> yeah for like, sure. like yeah, beyond like love family. like we're family and you have a brother or a sister and and you love that person and you still pick on that person and it's not it doesn't excuse it but right. usually what happens when you get older in life like in your 40s and 50s is you're like mature enough to then say you know i'm sorry i i don't mean to pick i didn't mean to pick on you younger yeah. but we aren't <laughs> uh, mature <laughs> we are jackass like we aren't supposed to grow up we're right. supposed to be like doing this as i guess forever but so that normal like growing up phase and and being like hey man i i just want to let you know i love you and like i tell you i'm that sorry all the time. i ever yeah i know i tell that to you too yeah dude so do you think maybe the other guys feel like since you're you sort of said like you know you you almost play this role of being like the that butt of a joke that it's, that it's almost their job also yeah. to like throw it at you and kind of like give you this shit and like they're like this is just work for me like I we're kind of supposed to do had, that yeah I maybe think that like might have a little in bearing in, in you know on that it's like maybe. it's just a, it, it's accepted it's it's what as we've done for so long yeah but you know I I don't I I would like to think that if I were on the other side of it like I wouldn't be root like rousing the dude sure. hard yeah. over and over again because i can see when i do it to some of our new crew or whatever i can see their their emotions and their their whole like mm. outlook on like their spirit like like when i when when i see other people start doing things to them i see them instantly just like go into this like oh man i, I I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like oh no like and it totally makes it's probably hard worse. enough coming in like to a new crew and then get rousted it's like jesus maybe i don't yeah. belong here well there's <laughs> but, know? but you should you should get fucked with you know at a, but there's a certain sure. point at which because i get, get fucked, fucked with, with i know like okay it's about to cross the line i don't want to like there's no point in me hurting his or her feelings for anything right now. We're not even filming. What's the point? Yeah. Hey, man, just know this. I'm just trying to teach you something. That's it. That's all. Cool. And then it's like, oh, okay, cool. And then it's like the seniors lifted. and freshmen. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, so, so what, what was the conversation whatever. that you and I had? We had a conversation on the flight of home from India. Or like, uh, yeah, it was, I, I was actually not, I going, was to going to India and... I think we sat next to each other on the way back too. I remember bonding. I remember that it's been something that we reflected on like many years later, but I hadn't gotten sober yet. I was a fucking pile of pile. Uh, you weren't a, dude. Was, it was like the, well, so you, the conversation. <laughs> so we're going to India. What movie was this Two for number two? Yeah. yeah. We're going to India and they paired Steve-O up with me on the 17 hour flight to to India, you guys fly. You guys fly first gets class. The short end but of the but, stick but every time. Steve, Steve, you were like this was like this was like the beginning of the end. This was like this was the beginning of the the gnarliest you could ever be in doing like um, drugs. 
like you were, this was going to India. Yeah. So you got a, a nose full of cocaine before you got on Dude, the flight because well, no, there was I no. Didn't, I didn't. I didn't do any cocaine. No, he that, smuggled that second movie. But with it, we can't cool. really talk about that. I, I probably but, smuggled drugs for sure. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Well, I made a whole but video. But I do about know that somehow. <laughs> but yeah, I do what know. Drugs did you bring to India? But, I mean, I don't know. Well, I, mean, here, I, mean, me, I mean, probably <laughs> like swallowed a bunch of numbers downers. So let's just go back to the. Go back to the, uh, the but, but I can tell you this. I, I do know that you did smuggle drugs because I smoked some weed out of your ass. Okay, good. So that ass came ass. from his butt. Good. So yeah, yeah, I don't know how ass, it got dude. there. I swallowed a condom. I probably swallowed yeah. like five or six condoms yeah. full of weed. Really? Yeah. You didn't just yeah. do one? You did no. like five oh, or dude, six? I got, he, like, he did. I got he packed the like, he had weed. Dude. I got to, I got to the point. I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to fucking choke on it. And I'm like. Yeah, I yeah. fucking had like five and or I'm six And I'm sitting next wow. to him on this plane for 17 hours, and he's like just, wow, wow. And I'm like, dude, um, what, so what's up? Like, what, where do you come from? Like, what's your story? Like, like let's, we got a lot of time to talk. Let's talk about real stuff. Let's talk about life outside of this cool shit we do of Jackass. And we got to talk, and, and I was like, you know, man, like, none of this really matters. Like, what matters is you're you. Like you matter, and you need to take care of yourself. Like everyone likes crazy Stevo, and we all love that crazy Stevo. But if there's no crazy Stevo anymore because crazy Stevo killed himself on fucking doing too many drugs, and you had no responsibility for anything, I said to you, I was like, you need to take care of yourself, man. And I love you, and I care about you, and I t truly believe you have the ability to be a, a, a like a, a rad person. Because you were not a rad person at that point. <laughs> Definitely not. And, and we <laughs> talked and we kept talking and and then we smoked uh, weed from your butthole later on. <laughs> and, but, well, you know. <laughs> well, what do you remember? Like, that's why that's so what I'm talking about. You, so, hey, you remember that shit I was telling you on the plane? Yeah. Fuck that. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even remember. No. I just know that we bonded. No, that's honestly, know, his right? response was totally, like, kind of shocked. I remember you were like shocked that I would even bring that up or talk about it, like because it was, was it was like, like your mortal enemy. Uh, you didn't want to like acknowledge what you were really doing, and right. I stopped you and I and made you acknowledge it. And you were you were like you're concerned. Like, you're on my shit list for the next. Yeah, was years. he combative or sort of like I receptive and No, you, you weren't. You yeah, weren't we, competitive. We, bond, we bonded. It was, it was we had a bro down. Yeah, and and so that was the second. But that movie. was three. How many years before it was, it was, you got uh, you cleaned up on that? About two years before. Two years. That, yeah. And two years more went by. So that was like the beginning of yeah. really taking off that stuff. And then, then we did the MTV special, the 24-hour well, right, takeover. But before, before that. Everybody keeps talking about this 24-hour takeover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. whatever, dude. <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> Wait, I want to talk about the end of the yeah. the second movie. Like you had the, the pubic beard. Yeah. And, and that idea came about. Because we had a, a writing session at Jeff Tremaine's house to come up with ideas for the movie. Yeah. And, and I said, uh, just in, in, in this meeting, I said, hey, man, for what it's worth, I uh, d like looked at my, my bush, my pubic hair. It was just like such a gnarly afro. Like, uh, you had to just I, I, sh I shaved put it, it off. And I shaved it off, and it was so much <laughs> pubic. It was such a big bush. Like, I stuffed it into an empty drug baggie. Yeah. Like, uh, I've and, done and this several times <clears> as well. It's, <clears throat> it's sitting in my, uh, in my medicine cabinet in my bathroom. Um, and so we're like, okay, what can we do with, with pubic hair? And, and like, it, the whole idea didn't come up in that session, but that was like the genesis, like the, where, where it all came. So you end up with the, everyone's pubic hair yeah. super glued to your face. Which, by the way, I would do that. I've said this. What you every did, day, you, you, I, 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 I would, I, I've said, and I would really do every day for like, I would say almost the rest of my life, have to shave off your dick's pubic hair off my beard, then break my neck again. Seriously, that, that makes so, sense. So, that, so, that, so, yeah, so I'm up. like, this is yeah, gold. Every and I didn't person have in the world, <laughs> every person in the world would agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. no, I, I got the gold best and it was skit simple, of yeah. fucking movie and possibly all time of Jackass, and I didn't have I to mean, break my neck. I don't know, dude. Or, done with the carbs ass. That's and too much. You, that's and you the, best. With the, yeah. the pubic beard. The, those the are, pubic beard was good though, because it was like but the, the prank within a prank aspect where Aaron thinks he's pranking this guy, but the prank is all on him. Like, but it was. 
the perfect. But, but Dunn's car up the ass is probably it's and then, like and the best thing. That, ever. That's pretty much the best thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the reason I bring up the pubic beard and, and what the bit was called, it was called the terror taxi. Yeah. Do, you know, with the pubic hair on your, and then with the, like the, the whole terrorist bomb thing. Yeah. And uh, you, after it was filmed, you told everybody, oh, I knew it was pubic hair. I was just being a bro. I was just going along with it because I didn't want to ruin the bit, but I knew. Okay, like, do you want whole, me to tell you the truth? I mean, this is a, this is a controversy that's that's raged on forever for since, the years. For, since the beginning. Since the beginning of it. Like, and, 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 and he's got an answer. Oh, I, I'm, I, Let's get I don't truth. lie. I don't need to <laughs> lie. Why do I need to lie about anything? My life is so crazy already. So, so that whole time you, you so absolutely I, knew. So I walked <laughs> in. This is huge. So I walked into Tremaine's <clears throat> office and he says to me, we're going to film. And I don't care. At this point, I can tell like anybody, everybody. And I've told it to, as verbatim the same way every time because it's the truth. But I don't care to tell the whole world now. It doesn't matter. They can I don't, know. I don't think that you've told it the same every time. I have. I've told it the same every time. They, they, it's the they, way they it went knew. down. No, I didn't know about the pubic. Okay, so check this out. So <laughs> I walk in. Oh, we got Tremaine. another version. I, <laughs> no, I no. Just changed you right asked me. V6. <laughs> Listen, I'm going back to the beginning okay. of how I even ended up in this skit. Okay. I, I'm not. At that time, I didn't know there was going to be any hair involved on my face but i can tell you this that tremaine told me that he we were going to film the skit that i wrote years ago and i went through all of my notes when i got home because i write everything down and catalog it and i didn't find it anywhere and i had already turned in some fucking gold for this movie and it wasn't being filmed so i knew it was a setup i'm like i told my girlfriend at the time i said they're either going to pull a gun out or a knife out or they're going to take me i thought what they were going to do is take me to jail and fuck with me in jail and so that was where mine was my mind was going so when they're putting the pubic hair the dick hair as i refer to on Merkin. my chin or on my face all over it i even said is this pubic hair and and it's in the film i think it was it, i think they used that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and and I, and she goes no it's hollywood hair and at that point i didn't even process or give a fuck because I realized that what is happening right now is hilarious, right? So I went into the taxi. I didn't know it was Jay Chandler C car whatsoever. I should have, because he's I, Super recognizable. Troopers. But I'm sitting behind him, and Dimitri's sitting next to me, and we're filming going <clears throat> to do this fucking gnarly terrorist taxi bit. And so I'm in character saying, "Dig me through the bird bank airport, please," and all those things. And <laughs> And I don't know it's Jay and Dimitri's looking over at me saying like saying like hey hey say that one and I said something something that he had said to me and then I started talking about liking women's breasts and stuff and and then I'm like yeah we're going this way and then all of a sudden we're in a parking lot and Jay gets out and I'm like I fucking got a bomb and why would I say I've got a fucking bomb that's totally fake with the dude who's pointing a gun at me like. Do you think I would actually be? A, no, I'd be like, dude, I'm so sorry instantly. So the only way out for me was to look like a badass and act tough. And so I was like, fuck you, dude. I got a fucking bomb. What are you going to do? And all this shit. So you, th you still thought this was <laughs> real or fake? No, I, I no, knew you it was knew fake. It were, you knew it was a bit. At that point. You didn't look like you knew it was a bit. Exactly. But I'm telling you the truth. Okay. okay. I, can't I knew it what was... you're telling me. <laughs> you can't process it. It's true. <laughs> I mean, this, I don't know. No, so I, dig this. So dig the this. The story's going like this. No, no, no. The both. story's going the same direction the whole time. I knew it was a setup. I didn't know about the pubic hair. I said, is this pubic hair? But then I didn't even think about it anymore because so I want to stay in character. The whole time we're, I'm being abducted all of a sudden with the... Or, I, he tells me to get out, get on the ground. I'm in the back of the, the fucking taxi... And I'm literally laughing my ass off, like under my breath, because I know I'm Mike. And Bam says something, and I go, "That's Bam Margera. He's famous. You should listen to him." Like, you think but, I'm but, gonna but, say that shit if I'm terrified of my life? But I remember there's a point where you're in the van and you're like, "Fuck, fuck, like, yeah, fuck, 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 fuck. This is fucking stupid. What the fuck, you <laughs> assholes? I'm sick of this shit. Get me out of here." That was <laughs> fake. No, it was. Entertaining. <laughs> okay, 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 so, so okay, if, okay. I, if I understand correctly, 
You didn't know it was pubic hair glued all over my face. I did not know face. it was pubic hair and glued all over my face. you didn't know that it wasn't a real taxi driver. I knew so it was a setup. So what did you know? <laughs> I knew it was a setup the minute Jeff told me that I wrote the skit and I went back through all my notes from all the last many years and couldn't find it when I knew that we had already f turned in really so, great ideas and we're wasting so, time doing this. What is this old skit? I don't, I didn't write it. If I didn't write it, but we're filming it, but he told me I'm writing, I wrote it, then it's a setup. I don't know how it's going to go down, but I know it's a setup. All right. So, so as soon as the cab driver pulls the gun in your head, you know, this is a bit. Uh, a prank on me. Yeah. So, but then, so you just sort of play it for the camera, like uh, yeah. the way you did it. I but feel bad knew. telling everybody all the time over and over, because especially they don't believe me. So this is once but and it's for the all. truth. <laughs> like I'm like, it's not a, just a once and for all, because this will spark new conversation of like, <laughs> why, like, why would you even say that? It's not true. I'm like, it is. It's just the truth. It's how it went down. I am the one person <laughs> I that knows. Still don't understand what you've explained. So let's move I on. I didn't know about the pubic hair. I knew it was somehow a setup. I didn't know how it was going to go down. My thought was, and I told my girlfriend at the time that it was going to be like I got a gun pulled on me, a knife or something like that, or taken to jail, where then I get fucked with, like leave me overnight with cameras everywhere, and I'm freaking out. That I didn't know it was going to stop there. And then when I come out and I'm acting or I'm scared, whatever, right? Right. Then they tell me about the pubic hair. And then that process is through my mind like, oh, fuck. Ugh. Like, that's disgusting. Now that I have a moment to okay. just take a breath. And then I started puking because it was in my mouth where I had just ripped out a tooth you, or something. You had or, crabs in your mouth. And, and, yeah. And, and then that, that was all. That's all real. Like, come on, man. Okay, good. Was good. the dick hair really that necessary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I made sweatshirts too. It said, it was, right. Yeah. I, I like it. I, I love Anyways. it. Anyways. So, so I think that of all the guys on Jackass, that, that you are probably the most like well adjusted in that you don't really subscribe to fame or celebrity. You don't really identify as that. You're just a normal guy, you live a normal life. And I think you've also been more entrepreneurial with the money that you got from Jackass than most any of the other guys in that you've taken it and invested it in all of this real estate. Like you said, you own nine houses. Like well, uh, you had a skate seven shop. right now. Seven. Right. But yeah. And I, when I found out about this real estate initiative that you were all into and that you had like at the time, like what, nine or ten houses, I, I remember thinking, dude, danger, that's great while the market's doing well but like dude these how if the real estate market crashes you always that, have that, a backup plan what's the backup plan well i bought my first house off the first movie where we made just the like you know we didn't make that much money but i i bought a building uh down payment in my hometown where i grew up to start a skate shop so i bought the building and got a loan for the business because it's better to own the real estate than it is to have a business. You can fail a business, but if you own the property, you can, you can continue rent to rent it out and whatever else. <laughs> and so that's I, the McDonald's movie. Yeah. No, this was okay. way before that movie right. came out. But it's the way it's the no, same McDonald's philosophy. was around way before. This, this is way before. I came up with this process. <laughs> 1958. No, no, you're, you're right. Smart. About, Very smart. Who's this McDonald's character? Yeah. Right. Ray, so, Ray Kroc, dude. Right. Fuck that dude. He's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the truth. No, I'm kidding. So, I, I I took the money that I made for that movie and I moved back. I, I lived in Hollywood at the time for like three years, trying you know being a part of the whole thing and whatever. It was a great time. But then I moved back to my hometown and started my skate shop and bought a house. And since then, I've I've acquired many homes uh, that I you know vacation rentals and whatever else. Being involved in real estate is a long-term game. It's not something you do. There's a lot of people that flip homes, and if you have decent credit, you can get in the game of that. And that's a pretty good living, but my plan was because I'm fourth-generation Oregonian, I love Oregon, I wanted to own as much in, in Oregon that, of places that I would want to live, um, and that's my philosophy behind it. And basically, uh, in the long game of it is there's like a up and down. It's a roller coaster, the real estate market. It's the same as anything with inflation. Uh, you know, the only way to protect your uh, money. Like when I was a little kid uh, in elementary school, I used to buy suckers for 10 cents and take them to school and sell them for 25 cents to my, to my classmates. So I'd make 15 cents every sucker and I'd sell like 
20 suckers a day. And then one day I went to the store and that sucker that was 10 cents, my price was now 25 cents. So I had to buy them for 25 cents and sell them for 50 cents. I made more money. But if I had bought in boxes at 10 cents, then I would have been rich. Mm -hmm. And okay, that's so my philosophy with houses is inflation hits, you know, and when inflation hits, the only way to protect your money is to have it invested in something that goes up with inflation instead of it just sitting in the bank. So how many right. of those houses are rented out? They're all, I mean, I bought my parents a house, like one of the first and uh, my house I live in and then. And you do all your own construction. Yeah, I build. Great. I yeah, I've been to one of your houses. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I have it, a lot of really friends. It really is incredible what you do with houses, man. It's Thank fucking you. badass. I obviously don't do it alone. I have a lot of good friends that, you know, are contractors. And along the way, I like to be involved in it so I can learn because, like, what's the point if mm -hmm. you can't learn how to do it? So. I feel like you were building a sauna in one of your yeah, houses. Yeah, I'm doing a sauna. Like, Fucking, yeah, I slept thing. in your house. I was scared of the ghosts in your house. Yeah, wait, 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 you did. When, when we were, yeah, when we were in that one city. So, let, anyways, let, let me ask you this: If you're so fucking entrepreneurial with your suckers for ten cents, like, <laughs> the <laughs> fuck don't you sell merch? Well, I yeah. <laughs> good because, question, Steve. You have because, nine houses, but you have no you're wearing, t-shirts. Great you're question. Wearing I'm wearing it, but where do you find it? Yeah, you where, where get can it. they get this shirt right you gotta, now? You got to find me somewhere. Like, where's Waldo? Yeah. Well, like, where's Danger? And but I'll have, give you the one on my back. Or I have a whole stack in my truck. And otherwise. how do you take the credit cards that the people want to pay with you? <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about. Type right. box. Yeah, type box but, packing. But, no, the merch stuff. Packing. The merch stuff and all that comes with the the whole idea of, in a sense, fame and, sure. and things. So I know I, it goes against where, where you're at, but I no, it's not against it. You it's want just, us to sell suckers I, for you at type box? Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Sucker comes. He's like does that immediately. Suck, like, free sucker with every purchase. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Wow. No, but them away like, for free. honestly, what I was doing and what I've been doing and continue to do right now is I, when I lived in LA and I realized that it like basically whatever career I want to have is based on what other people think is cool, whether they think I'm cool this week or next week, I'm not cool. And I like, I don't want to live by that. I don't, I, I need a base, like a, I need a safe zone, a place that I can say, okay, if all that shit falls apart, I have a life. And so that's why I moved up back up to Oregon and did all this stuff. And, and I have that now. Like I have a great base that I've worked on for 15 years. Like, like I can say that if the Hollywood stuff and all this <coughs> stuff, if it do doesn't happen anymore, I don't care. I have a great life. Mm -hmm. Like I really don't need to be hustling in the game of Hollywood. Like I don't, I don't even like I, it's fun and it's, like it brings me back to the old days, you know, like being around stuff, fun, like being in Hollywood and stuff. But to be honest, it, without having that uh, base and that grounding, the being grounded in what's real, without having that, I I, I didn't want to be a part of any of this fame. And that's just the reality. Was so. there a moment that like made you sort of distrust fame or did you already come into it with that sort of well, like, oh, this is I a already fleeting. knew because we're all going to die. Like, and all I cared about was living a life where I was a good person and all those around me felt good about the name, I, my name and who I was and what well, I represented. Well, your name sucks. That's why we call you Dange. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying like, <laughs> like, you know, and that's the truth. Yeah. All right. So where can they buy the merch? Well, we, we haven't figured that out yet, but I mean, yeah, how, how, did, how did you lose your own website to the Russian hackers? And man, really I don't know. The Russian hackers got in and they just, they were like, we're, we're determined to get dangeraaron.com. <laughs> so a sooner or later, we'll be able to facilitate merch on that. Hopefully if the Russian hackers will let it go for, for less than a hundred thousand dollars. So well, I, yeah, uh, we're I doing really a Venmo to a give me my uh, dot com back if you want to Venmo at that's called Venmo Venmo oh, Venmo yeah. Venmo, <laughs> Venmo. Uh, yeah. uh, alright dude well Sorry. fuck man um, I, I do believe strongly that we're going to get your merch operation up and running yeah. I do think that you're uh, sure. like, like a, I think you're a good person I think you're a great guy I think you've got a really healthy view on the world and your role in it you know, I think that we should take advantage of the moment that we're about to have. And, for sure, uh, for sure. Know, and, and I love the, the, you know, we can do this together, man. It's fucking cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah, we love you. I've had some <laughs> yeah. great talks with you. I love you a lot. <clears throat> well, here's what yeah. I would like to say in the end of all this, in this awesome wild ride van, is that um, 
you you asked how I maintained being a somewhat normal real person and it literally goes back to me being a child uh, growing up in a mortuary and you asked well what are the benefits of that it was very beneficial it opened up my eyes if if let's say everybody at the age of 18 has to experience death so they can appreciate their life I think that's a great thing but I <coughs> was experienced it at a very young age I didn't and it was very impactful to my whole existence and I just think that that we, we don't have a lot of time on, on earth. Like we don't, like 80 years isn't a long time, 100 years ain't, no, there's never, and you don't know when it's gonna end. But I can tell you that's in my experience when I've died and I survived something where a DMT was released in my brain and I experienced death, but survived. And the uh, life flashed everything. And then at the end, I, I was able to let go, surely dying of my life on this planet because of being at peace with my decisions and the things I've done and who I am. And that is, I think, the most powerful thing and the most important thing that we all need to think about and really consider because it can come like that. How'd you almost, your heart stopped? No, uh, I went skydiving and, oh, dude, I went skydiving for the first time and only time and they partnered me up with this dude named Steve-O I'm not even oh, yeah. kidding. And and he was dread dreaded kid like in his 20s and I went skydiving uh tandem and the parachute didn't open correctly and so we went into this G4 spiral and then he cut the parachute and then I I was falling and that was it as far as I was concerned and I had no control over that DMT releasing in my brain it just did. It, it totally did and I was that was it. I, we were free falling to death and he was screaming too and I'm like we're gonna die and poof, it popped <coughs> and you know that is one time and i've had it another time not as severe and i realized these things it's it's just really need to like you know that's crazy yeah the, thoughtful of the yeah. existence we there's have. a talk given by alan watts where he was like the one of the best things you can do in life is contemplate death for a long time because it's a similar thing where you it's like pouring manure all over your brain because then flowers start to spring from it. And mm -hmm. I always kind of really like that. Yeah, yeah that is good. I mean, it's a Western society thing, man. People just don't want to fucking think about it. They don't want to think it's much better to think about it so that you can have lived your life deliberately. Exactly. The way that you want to fucking exactly. do it, dude. Sure. Like, yeah. you didn't just let things happen to you. You you were good. Let's go party, right. dude. Let's yeah, go party! Dude. Yeah. yeah, dude. Love you, man. Hey, dude, I love you guys, sure, too. I really yeah, love thanks you, for doing bro. this, man. I'm thanks fucking for keeping it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, fucking cool. right on. And Lit. follow Dange on Instagram. Yeah, at Danger Aaron. And buy his merch at? Well, we're going to be going to uh, hopefully DangerAaron.com <laughs> yeah, and we can get a tight box. And give it back. Yeah, give me my website back, dogs. I'm back in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Love you, dude. Yeah, that was fun. How can you not love Danger Aaron? He's just a sweet guy, and he's my bro. You know, like when I was talking about hardware before, I love the way that I got the hardware removed from my ankle and mounted in, in exactly the same way that it was in my ankle on a like the model of an ankle. And I can't wait to do it again with the plate and screws that I got in my collarbone. Of course, I'm not going to say about how I got it in my collarbone, but I am going to say thank you guys for watching listening whatever you do man i just really appreciate it man can you believe it fucking episode 50 i should have probably said that on the intro but whatever <laughs> yeah dude